So we can carry on with the uh, uh, Govardhan Parikram. We were at uh, let's see. Yes, that's right. And Danivartan Kund, where it's the tax pastimes. And these tax pastimes take place at many places and they happen on a daily basis as well. <laughs> so then we, which we covered last time. So now let's go into Chandro Sarovar, Parashauli, Gauri Kunda, and Anior village. Anior village is very significant because that's where uh, Govardhan. And, and good offerings. Offering, good place. Well, he had to, mm. that's where he had And that's why he kept saying, Anior, Anior, give me more, give me more. So the 32, 33, 34. So these are a little out of the way. I've never been there. 35 is there. 36. So this is the pastime that we've uh, done uh, recently. So we can very, very briefly explain that the cowherd boys uh, or men had were gathering all the worship, uh, worship items to um, do puja to Lord Indra and Krishna inquired what's going on and they explained to him and he persuaded them that it's better uh, to worship Gomata and the Brahmins and the cows uh, because they give you practical benefits whereas Indra he gives water to the oceans as well so it's not dependent on Indra, otherwise he wouldn't put uh, water on there, he wouldn't put rain in the ocean. <laughs> so he had a very interesting arguments to persuade the Bijbasis to do Govardhan Puja instead. So he advised them to cook and um, thousands of wonderful preparations and place them here in the area between Danivartan Kun and Anior village. Uh, there were literally thousands of hills made of mm -hmm. samosas, kachoris, rice, halwa, puri, sweet balls, lakes of sabji, sweet rice, innumerable other preparations for the pleasure of Govardhan Hill. When the puja was to begin, Krishna expanded himself into the gigantic body of Giriraj. He declared that he is Govardhan himself started to eat all the preparations made by the Bijbasis. He dunked the water from various kuns and still unsatisfied, started to call, Anio, Anio, bring me more, bring me more. <laughs> the village near Shankarasan Kund is until now called Anio. Okay. And this is uh, absolutely amazing version of Govardhan, with Gomata there as well. Gigantic Govardhan finished, all that was prepared and still unsatisfied, called Anio. Bajibasis became a little worried. We are poor villagers. Whatever we had, we have presented before you. Please be satisfied with that. Then somebody suggested that the Supreme Lord will be satisfied with Tutsi leaves and water from the Ganga. <laughs> and that's what they offered him. They gave him Tulsi leaves. And when he dunked Manasi Ganga, Kusum Sarovar, and other kuns, he finally explained. Tripto asmi, tripto asmi. I am now satisfied. Mm -hmm. I am now satisfied. Wiped his hands and mouth with his cloth. He told the Bijbasis to ask for a boon. They requested for only one. May this Lala of ours always remain happy and live a long life. What a wonderful uh, boon to ask for. By Lala, of course, they meant none other than Krishna. When the four-handed form of Giriraj disappeared, Krishna told the Bajabasis, did you ever have a darshan of Lord Indra? <laughs> and Giriraj is very kind. He came personally to see you. He fulfills everyone's desires. After Govardhan Puja, all the Bajabasis became very satisfied and felt that their lives were successful. Nanda Maharaj called Brahmanas to perform huge yagya sacrifice and all the demigods attended, all except Indra. <laughs> this is another really nice uh, picture of Govardhan. Very beautiful darshan. Ah, so Indra became Sorry. angry. He sent the uh, Sambatak uh, clouds of devastation. 
inundated Vrindavan with rain. He is mentally insulted Krishna as a talkative child. <laughs> and uh, the clouds and the rain began to pour. There was huge pillars of rain described. Very dangerous situation for the Vijbasins. Krishna, of course, um, lifted Govardhan after the Vijbasis prayed to him for protection and asked them all to come and stand underneath this fantastic umbrella. And for seven days, seven nights, he lifted it with his little finger of his little hand and of his left hand. And uh, for seven days, seven nights, the devotees gazed at him and he gazed at the devotees and time flew by. They didn't feel hunger or thirst or any other discomfort. Why? Because they were associating directly with the Supreme Lord. They were simply astonished how Krishna was holding up the mountain with the little finger of his left hand. And of course, Indra was humbled by this show of strength by Krishna. And he called off the clouds and the rain. And then we'll see uh, little, I think we haven't covered this yet, but we will do in the next session, uh, where Indra realizes his mistake, he comes down, he doesn't come alone, he's very clever, he knows he's made a big, big blunder, <laughs> so he came with Surabhi, Gomata, Krishna's always very affectionate to Gomata, no matter what, he may not be so affectionate to Indra because of what he tried to do, kill the family of Krishna, <laughs> So anyway, Krishna forgave him and shows that Krishna is very kind. Even a big mistake of Indra's was forgiven. And then they bathed Krishna and they called him, they named him Govinda. <laughs> very powerful pastime. Seven years, two months, 17 days. Then we come to Gopal Raj temple and Shiva temple, Balaram Dauji temple, Sankarsan Kund. 42 is here, 40 is there. So this is, what is this? Govind Kund. Ah, Govind Kund. Yes, yes, it's very famous. Um, Airavrat, he performed Abhishek of Krishna with the water of celestial Ganga. He brought in his trunk. Surabhi poured over him her milk, offered beautiful prayers. The water from this bathing ceremony created the famous Govinda Kund. Now all the demigods came and together they performed puja and gave him gifts such as golden crowns. <laughs> oh, oh yes, this is quite an interesting pastime. After getting all the calves uh, together, Vajbasis returned to Krishna and saw all these golden paraphernalia. So they were wondering what's going on. They wondered where all these things came from. Nan Baba became somewhat worried. I hope that Krishna didn't steal it somewhere in some temple. We know he's stealing butter as a small child. <laughs> but Krishna's fatty Brahman friend, uh, Madhu Mangal, told them, do not worry. When everybody ran away, I could not. You know I'm not so quick. I could not run. And I have seen what happened. First cows came, started to talk to Krishna. Elephant with Ganga water came. After a while, a guy with four heads came. That must be Brahma. Started to worship <laughs> Krishna with all these golden things. Then another one came. He was far out. He had eyes all over his body, Indra. <laughs> and then the one with the snakes came. Lord Shiva. All, this, all these far out people came and started to worship Krishna. After they bathed Krishna, they left just shortly before you came. <laughs> Krishna's boyfriends didn't know what to think about this funny Brahmin boy, but they stopped worrying, picked up these chamaras, ghee uh, lamps, conch shells, umbrellas, had Krishna seated on the throne and spontaneously started to worship him. This must have been an incredible pastime. And then we have the Gopal Prakata Stali. That's 30, what is that? 41 which is there. This is um, the actual spot where 
Mother Vendra Puri discovered the beautiful Gopal deity known as Srinathji. This is a really famous deity, which we've talked about many, many times. The deity of Gopal, and now the Srinathji is worshipped in Natwar, very beautiful, opulent temple. The deity of Gopal was originally installed by Brajanab 4,800 uh, years ago. It's very special and beautiful. After Mother Vendrapuri left Vrindavan, two Brahmins from Bengal served the deity. After, after time had passed, Raghunath Das Goswami saw that there was a need to find a devotee to serve Gopal. He gave it to Vithal the son of Balabacharya. So Vital is very famous. The deity of Srinathji is currently being gloriously worshipped in Natwa by the Rudra Sampradaya, the four Kumaras Sampradaya, Nimbakacharyas. This is Srinathji, very beautiful indeed. Then we've got Nipakund, Radha Govind Temple, 43, yeah? Radha Govind Mandir. The deity of Sri Govindev in this temple on the banks of Govindakund was originally installed by Bajna 4,800 years ago. And then we got Nipakund. Just behind Radha Govind Mandir, there is a small lake called Nipakund. There used to be many Kadamba trees on the banks of this Kund. Many of their leaves were in the shape of cups. Um, Krishna and the cowherd boys used to take lunch here on the banks of this kund and use the leaves of the kadamba tree as cups. So once the gopis were passing this way and Krishna blocked their way demanding tax, gopis wanted to go on and threatened Krishna to tell Kams about it. Krishna replied that he was not afraid of Kams. He would kill him and threw, throw his dead body on Govardhan head. Gopis laughed leaving their pots of milk on the ground, returned home. Krishna then fed the boys with butter and yogurt. Wonderful pastime. That's 43. So 43 is here. Again, it's not somewhere where we go. And then 44 is there. Mm, I can't remember this actually. Bhajan Kutir of Mahadavendra Puri is on the bank of Govinda Kund. Yeah, we must do. In the uh, 43 in the Tila, where is a small hill on the side of Govinda Kund, where Lord Indra, Brahma, and other demigods stood during Krishna's Abhishek. This hill surrounded by many buildings, and it is very small now. Now, 45 is the, is, uh, oops, where go? there is 45 is there. Doka Doji Temple. Doji means elder brother. Once Balaram, Krishna's elder brother, was so intently looking at Krishna's movements during Ras Lila, he turned blackish and the deity became, became known as Doka, staring Doji, staring Balaram. Interesting. It shows even Balaram is uh, impressed by Krishna's pastimes. Balaram Mukutsila. 46, is it? Yeah, 46. So that is there. On the left side, there's an impression of Lord Balaram's crown, Mukut, on the rock known as Balaram Mukut Sila. So, somewhere here. <laughs> Nashinga Temple, 47. Where's that? Oh, it's a long way down, huh? 46 or all the way down. Yeah. Well, this is on the hill, a little bit on the hill. So the Nasingadev, near the bank of Navajikund, is a temple with black stone deity of Nasingadev. There you go. Unusual. Upon request, the Pujari may lift the deity's dress to reveal Hiranyakashipu being ripped. Pallad is standing nearby. From the top of Nishinga Mandir, one can get wonderful view of Apsaravan, forest surrounding the ta tail of Govardhan from the side of Govindakund. Navakund. So that must be 40. 
48. 48 is just here. Oops. There. Okay. Navakunde, also known as Navalakun, means young or ever youthful. This lake received its name after ever youthful Sri Krishna. Once Radha and Krishna were absorbed in ecstasy of a Ras dance, then Krishna looked at the beautiful Radha and simply melted into this lake. <laughs> Radha Rani then looked at the Bangalalita form of Krishna and melted into the Apsara Kund. The waters of these two Kunds are simply melted forms of Radha Krishna's love, Prema. This Kund is sometimes called Punchari Kund since it is direct at the Puncheri tail of Govardhan Hill. So right at the end, right at the end. Puchri, Puchri means tail in Gujarati anyway. Mm -hmm. Puch. Mm -hmm. Then 49 is the Apsara Kund where Radharani melted. When the demigods uh, came to bathe Krishna, 108 Kunds were created by the water from his Abhishek. Apsara Kund was created when the seven main apsaras, heavenly dancing girls, came to perform their Abhishek of Krishna. Wow, okay. Shivati Radharani is extremely beautiful um, apsara or transcendental damsel, and apsara couldn't receive its name after her. Eternally youthful Nandan Nandan is right next to her in the form of Navalakund. So they're both together. On the banks of Apsara Kund, there is Apsara Birhari Temple, Daoji Temple, and small Apsara Ishwar Shivling Shrine. It is said that 24 main incarnations of uh, Lord Vishnu eternally perform on the bank of this Kund. Krishna used to come here, and for the pleasure of his boyfriends, he manifested some of these forms and enjoyed his pastimes. Once he manifested 20 armed, Oh, sorry, 12 armed Vishnu form in the form of Gopi, in front of, sorry, Gopis and Shubhal took the form of Garud. On another occasion, he became Varaha, he started to dig the earth. Then he became Ramachandra, and cowherd boys became monkeys. Wonderful pastimes took place at this Apsarakund, very auspicious place. We'll certainly be having a look at a closer look at all of these places when we next go to go with them. Fifty is the Puncharika Lota Baba Temple. Fifty is there again at the tail. Oh yes, I remember this temple. We walked mm -hmm. past it. We were exhausted. <laughs> we only done half of Govardhan. <laughs> Lota Baba is a Krishna's cowherd friend boy. Boyfriend, boy, cowherd boy. Uh, one day he cooked a nice meal for Krishna and Balaram. Suddenly Krishna bus passed by an Akru's chariot heading to Mathura. And Lauta, he invited Krishna and Balaram for this meal. Krishna said, I'll, I'm just coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's a typical uh, Paratya comment. Mm -hmm. I'm just coming. <laughs> With the promise that he would return the next day. Since this time, Lauta Baba is sitting in this very same spot, facing the road, eagerly waiting for Krishna and Balaram to return. He's not eating anything, waiting for Krishna to start eating together. Hmm. The deity looks like Hanuman at first glance. In fact, Lauta Baba is considered non-different from Hanuman. Interesting. So then, Shyamadak. Yes, Prajan India also the Anuman, Anuman deity looks in orange color. Yes, indeed, indeed. Manikandali Kool Cave, what is that? What was that? 51, 52? That's 51, a little far away. 52 is here. And this uh, Manikandali Kool Cave is Raghav Pandit's cave. In this cave, Radha and Krishna used to meet and enjoy their intimate pastimes together. Raghav Pandit, associate of Mahaprabhu, used to use this cave as his bhajan kutir to perform nirjan bhajan, secluded bhajan. 
Raga Pandit always lived at Govardhan and Srila Rupa Goswami arranged for Srinivas Charya Narottam Das Thakur to go to Bridge Mandal Parikram with Raga Pandit. Many of the Goswami, like there's one Bhu Garba Goswami, he was a very good friend of Lokanar Goswami. They used to, he used to also sit uh, deep inside a cave and chant so they won't be disturbed by anybody or anything. And this was at a time 500 odd years ago when there wasn't anything built up there. Can you imagine now if they were around? <laughs> so this point about uh, having this secluded place to worship or chant is very important. We need to find that space when we're chanting. We may be surrounded by many people or many things going on. Sacred space. But yeah, we need to find that sacred space when we're chanting. Nat Ji Tempu, Aryavrat footprint, Indra Puja. Let's see what we got here. And that's the parcel from Bhagavad. 53, 54, 55. Indra Puja shrine. Yes, this also is very familiar. So when Govardhan Hill, Aryavrat footprint impressed upon the rock right next to it. Krishna was walking on Govardhan Hill, seeing the damage caused to Vrindavan, created by Indra's torrents of rain. He wasn't happy. Indra tried to kill his own. He's not happy. Indra Kund, 56. Indra Kund is there. On seeing Krishna, Indra fell down and offered obeisances at this place. He shed so many tears that they created a lake called Indrakund on the opposite side of the Parikara. Mark. 57. Surbi Kund 57 is there. Surbi Kund, this Kund filled with sweet water and was created by the heavenly Surbi cow brought by Indra from Bamalu to pacify Krishna after Indra realizes his mistake. Indra knew that he may not be forgiven by Krishna, but if Surabhi asks for his, on his behalf, then Krishna will surely forgive me because he loves cows. So Surabhi came forward to Krishna with the milk in her udder and requested Krishna to forgive Indra. Only then Krishna was appeased. See? Later, out of greed to have darshan of Krishna Lila, Surabhi resided at this place for the duration of Krishna's manifest Braja Lila pastime. Similarly, as Indra was forgiven by taking bath and performing Achman of Surabhi, all one's Aparad's offenses are forgiven by taking bath here. Very, very interesting place, Surabhi Kund. Must try to remember to have a bath there because so many offenses we commit. Aparads. Actually, I remember one devotee did take bath there when I was traveling with him many, many years ago, and I was wondering why he did that. Hmm. Rudra Kund, Ariju Kund, 58, is here, 58. Uttarakund, here Mahadev, she became so absorbed in meditation on Krishna Lila that he began to weep. Rudan means tears, and this kund is sometimes called Rudan kund, since it was created by Rudra's tears. There's also a great lake at this place surrounding Radha, uh, Rudra kund, named after one of Krishna's friends. It is said that here Radha and Krishna enjoy bathing together. 58, 59, 59 is there. This was created by King uh, Indra's uh, elephant, Ayurvat, who brought water of celestial Ganga in his trunk and stored it here for the bathing of Krishna at Govind Kund. And then we have 60, which is Samadhis, haven't been there. Uh, 60, where is 60? Oh, it's there. Okay. 60 samadhis. We never, never really take, paid much attention to that. 
Mukharvinda Vithal's Samadhi. That's 61. 61 is there. Means a lotus. Ah, this is a famous temple. This is really nice. Yes, Mukharvind means a lotus mouth of Govardhan. This particular Mukharvind is accepted by Vallab Sampadaya who managed the temple of Gopalji. The same Sampadaya is also looking after the original Gopal deity known as Srinathji at Natwa in Rajasthan. Six Goswamis had a good relation with Thalji, the son of Vallabhacharya, and they entrusted the responsibility of the Seva to the sons of Vallabhacharya, to the son of Vallabhacharya. With Thalnath's Samadhi and Vallabhacharya's Bhitakstan sitting place are nearby. Mm. So here is very amazing because everybody can get some milk and pour on Govardhan. Then we come to Dandavat Sila. I would know 62. There you go, it's there. It is said that anyone who circumambulates this Govardhan Sila seven times offers full Dandavats will be relieved of all offenses that may have been committed during Parikram. It is also said that the priests who serve in the temples on top of Govardhan Hill come here to rid themselves of offenses they may have committed for having climbed on the sacred hill. So generally speaking, uh, we don't step on Govardhan Hill because that's none different from Krishna. But there are some temples up there and the priests may go and worship there. So they come here and uh, free themselves of any offenses. Since pilgrims will have unintentionally stepped on many stones around Govardhan on their way, they happily circumambulate the Sila. Jatipura village and Gulala Kund, Kantoli, Villa Chu Kund, so 63 onwards, 63, 64, 65, 66, haven't been there. Villa Chu Kund, once, so 66, where's that? That's quite far. Yeah. When once uh, Shimadi Radharani lost her ankle bell here, she was searching for it when Krishna suddenly appeared and asked her jokingly if she was looking for her, his flute that had been lost. Radharani asked Krishna not to joke, but help her find the lost anklet. Krishna persisted in joking and Radharani became angry. In order to pacify her, Krishna started to dig up the earth with his bare hands. To Radharani's amazement, he dug up all varieties of ankle bells, some gold, some silver, besides all kinds of priceless gems. Krishna then smiled and asked Radharani, which one belonged to her? Feeling great happiness, Radha and Krishna embraced one another. <laughs> Beautiful tamal and kadamba tree on the bank of Biluchu Kund. So tamal is a black and kadamba must be the white. To get to Biluchu Kund, one has to go from Parikramag into this field. Sakistali. 67. Or oh, it's also known as Kadamba Khandi. After going th through Govardhan Hill for a second time, Manasi Ganga can be seen. This time from the other side of Parikram Road. On the opposite side of Manasi Ganga is Sakistali, Kadamba Khandi, where Chandravali used to live with her 64 Sakis. Mm -hmm. Within this village is a lake known as Lilavati Kund, Saki Kund, which was dug by the friends of Chandravali. There's always transcendental competition going on between Radharani and Chandravali to gain Krishna's attention. Of all the gopis, the eight Asta Sakis are prominent. Out of them, two are even more prominent, Radharani and Chandravali. And out of them, Radharani is the most prominent and dear love beloved of Krishna. Rupa Goswami has explained that Chandavali expands herself to become Rukmini in Dwarka. Yes, I know that story. Yeah, and gopis headed by Chandavali expand themselves to become 
queen headed by rukmini yeah good boy um riyanch very nice you're listening very intently i like that <laughs> so uh this is a wonderful pastime of uh, raghunath das goswami to ordinary people the competition of the gopis is very confusing <laughs> So one day, a Brijabhasi came to Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, who was doing his bhajan on the banks of Radha Kund, and brought him some buttermilk. Raghunath asked him from where he got this uh, uh, leaf, right? Where he got the buttermilk? Where he got the buttermilk? Yeah. And the Bajbasi joyfully said, I brought it from Sakistali. Hearing this, Raghunath angrily ordered Bajbasi to leave. Bajbasi could not understand Raghunath's mood and fled. <laughs> Raghunath Das Goswami is an intimate maidservant in Srimati Radharani's own group, Swapaksha. And just hearing about the place of Chandrali, Radharani's rival, made him act in this way. So it's a really transcendental pastimes take place between the two sets of gopis and the six Goswamis that we worship and the other acharyas, they all are actually from Radharani's group. <laughs> this group is not some political group, mundane, but it's actually to increase Krishna's pleasure in Golok Bandavan. So 68, Nima Gau or Uddhav Kund. 69, very important Udav Kund. So where is Udav Kund? There it is. Coming very close to Radha Kund, Shyam Kund. Udav Kund, this Kund is situated exactly west of Kusum Sarovar. Skanda Purana quoted in the Brahm, Srimad Bhagavatam Mahatmya gives a very interesting description of this place. Vajnab Maharaj manifested Udav Kund under the guidance of Sandilya and other rishis. So Sandilya was uh, very close to the Pandavas. Uddhav always resides here as a grass and shrubs in order to be sprinkled by the foot dust of gopis. After the disappearance of Lord Krishna, his queens in Dwarka were greatly afflicted by sorrow. So once Vajabhanaba came here with them, and together they performed a loud, very loud Sankirtan. So these were the queens. Um, they came here to get some relief from the separation of Krishna. In that Maha Sankirtan, all the associates of Krishna started to appear one by one. All of them joined the Kirtan and Arjun began to dance and play Madanga. Suddenly, Mahabhagavat Udham Udhav, um, emerged from the grass and he also became immersed in dancing. How could Krishna now remain behind when this Maha Sanketan was taking place? Krishna along with Radha Rani and other Sakis appeared after some time again disappeared. Udhav thus pacified the queens at this place. The deities in this temple at Udhavkund are believed to have been installed 5,000 years ago by Vajnab. On the horizon, we can see the tower of Towers of Kusum Sarova here, and on the opposite side of the Govardhan Parikram Road, indicating that we are getting close to the end of our Parikram. So Shiva, Shiva Kari, Raghunath Kunj, Rag, Radha Kunj Bihari Gaudiya Math. Just that's uh, 69 and 70, 70 and 71, sorry. And then we have the most glorious, glorious place of all. Radha Kund and Lalita Kund, Shyam Kund and Lalita Kund. So we also have, so that's the end of Govardhan Parikram. What we can do is tomorrow, we can do the Parikram of Radha Kund. So today we haven't got time, but uh, we can nicely go around Radha Kund tomorrow. So then we'll have completed the whole Parikram. Govardhan Parikram Ki Jai. So now we can actually pay obeisances because we have finished the Parikram of Govardhan. Tomorrow we'll continue with the, um, the Parikram of Radha Kund so that we, there's a lot of very special places around Radha Kund. So this is 
Radhakundi, and in itself there are glorious, glorious places of worship in this area. So, um, okay, we can stop. Any questions, any comments by anybody? Anybody like to say anything? Who've done Parikram like to add anything? Or who haven't done Parikram would like to go to Parikram? <laughs> Otherwise, we can go to the Nishinga. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you, Prabhuji, for making us do Parkrama. <laughs> but I want to do the long one. We haven't done the long one. When we went with you last time, we did the small one. We, we did it by car. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah that's cool. right. Yeah, we need, um, I think one day is not enough because mm -hmm. we would want to go and check out all of these other places that we normally don't bother. Yeah. So I think at least two, three days in Govardhan is very nice. It will be nice. Yes, Prabhuji. Let's see what uh, the Lord allows us to do. Yes, we, Prabhuji. We can make loads of plans, but uh, ultimately he can mm. sanction it only. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you for taking us today all this yatra. Thank you so much. Thank you. Govardhan Puja ki, Govardhan Parikram ki, Jai. Jai.